I'm Miles Morrison. Been uh, living here in Euclid, in the West Coast, for 30 years. We raised six kids here. Guitar is my main instrument, but I play bass and drums. And no matter what I'm doing, I'm always playing some instrument. There's always music in my head and music happening. Ended up in Euclid by way of coming out of Montreal. I played played out of Montreal for years. So I was beginning to have trouble as they yuppified everything in Montreal and you, you know where you're practicing becomes a million dollar condo. I thought, well, I'll move to Euclid because that's really cheaper than everywhere out there because nobody knows how great Euclid is in those days. And uh, I'll build a recording studio. Instead, I ended up working at the uh, weather station, uh, being a carpenter at a fish plant, playing music all the time too. But you, one distraction after another, I did put out an album anyway, finally. So I had a friend who was going downtown Montreal and I had some money in my pocket and I said, what are you doing? Well, I'm going down to the pawn shops and buy a guitar. I went, oh, okay. He bought a guitar and I bought a guitar. You know, Echo guitars from Italy in the, in the 70s, they're like bricks. Solid as a rock thing with no sound at all. I sold that to a girlfriend and bought an electric guitar and learned how to play that. Got into a band immediately, had to buy an amp. My best friend at the time was a drummer in a band. They needed a guitar player and I've been, you know, playing ever since. One time my father took me downtown to see there's a, a famous guitarist in, in Montreal. I think he's still around. Nelson Simons. He's playing in a a little, just a little grungy bar. And my father took me downtown thinking, well, he'll show me what it's like. Life is like being a musician and, you know, get this out of my head. <laughs> so he takes me down. We, we go into this little bar. My father's thinking he's going to say, well, dear, you don't want this life. See this. And Nelson leans over and says, talent helps, but it's how much you want to do it that counts. And if you want to do it, just do it. So wrong lesson delivered there, <laughs> Dad. The guy was so amazing. out to here and more music, different sorts, playing uh, with whoever's available and whatever's available, sort of country music with Wayne Vliet and rock and blues with Irv Nagy and the, and the, those guys. I did release an album, The Morrison Family Files, which was greatest hits from recording sessions in Montreal and all over the place, as a cassette originally and then CD. Uh, there was another album before that, too, that was only cassette. But I took pieces of that and called it the Morrison Family Files. So some stuff of the kids singing, and I think I recorded some of it in the living room here in the studio. And then I did uh, Miles Morrison and Big Beach, Made in Euclid, which there's some songs that you occasionally hear on the radio from that. And that was uh, a full rock band. A rock opera, we had 85 dancers, like all the, all the kids and all the adults from both towns and all the dark dance classes. The Dragon's Rock Opera, that was pretty amazing. We did, did concerts in both towns, Tofino and Yuclulit. So I've done huge full uh, rock bands with, you know, big choruses and everything. There's a, so electric rock bands. But lately I've been doing this Miles Morrison six guitars, acoustic uh, instruments, and because it's just easier, nobody to argue with, it's just me. They argue less over band issues than over family issues. Like, uh, I, I have a little more clout there, I guess. But one time, let me think, I had Sam, this is a, would have been a Yuki Days concert, so it's the full rock band. I had Sam playing drums. Jesse, I think, was playing clarinet. I'm not sure if Lucy was playing her violin or not. Uh, Heather was probably singing. Lindsay, I, she was playing, uh, Sydney playing flute? What was Lindsay playing? I'm not, Lindsay might have been playing trumpet, so they all play different things, but they all play piano. Anyway, I had them all up there, all of them, for, for that concert. That was kind of fun. I can still remember that. The high school band here was amazing. Generally, they do great, and then the school board decides to cut back on these things, which is really unfortunate, because it's been proven forever that music is another language, and the more music you know, the better you do in mathematics, for instance. So it opens up your mind. So music is so important. Been involved with Pacific Rim Art Society for almost 30 years. They kept, you know, hey, if you come and help at the door, you can watch this concert for free. Or help up set up tables and, you know, the band room got used for lots of things. There was all kinds of music, extreme classical and jazz and country, uh, trying, trying to mix it all up. A lot of classical music in those days. 
it was funny. It was a lot of handcraft, simple stuff, and then classical music from all around the world. And it kind of grew and changed. Now it's pretty well balanced, I think, slanted more toward uh, the artwork, paintings, and, and things. But some of us are musicians and have been here a long time. It could have been eight or ten guitars, because uh, I, you know, the old thing about how many guitars is enough, just one more. But I had some guitars made. I always thought that why not try to turn a bass into a guitar, put, put guitar strings on it, and I couldn't make it work. And then I found a guy in Oregon that, f that discovered how to do it. You use, um, you, you use an acoustic bass, you have to change the keys in the bridge a little bit. It just has a sweeter sound. It's, it's enormous. It's a bit difficult to play in just that it's huge, but it just, it, they're, they're amazing. And I have one of those. So I have one of those that I, and I tell the story of where it came from and this guy that makes them. Another one that uh, didn't quite work out. And I thought, well, that could probably be a lap steel baritone guitar. So it's this enormous thing that you play like a lap steel and it sounds like a pipe organ. It's just, so, so each of the six guitars ha has a story. And then because they're so unique, if I write songs on them, they come out completely different. So I have a repertoire of songs to play on each of these guitars. And it's, it's easy in those terms. It's, a, it's annoying to have six guitars to have to lug around and set up. It, It's a 1934 National Steel guitar, and I saw it in the newspa newspaper, I think, yeah. So I called him up. Should I come over now? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll be there about 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> so I hopped in the car, drove over there, and we hung out all night, and I came away with this thing. One time, uh, I think it was a Praz, Praz concert that uh, I did with a harpist. Ms. Gibson from the interior, I got her to come out. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I played slide guitar with somebody playing harp? And I met this person and talked to him. She came out here, we practiced for a week, and we did a concert at Greenpoint Theater. It was pretty interesting playing this with the, the harp. She, she didn't have a pedal uh, harp. She had the kind that has levers at the top, so she could change keys some. So it was really interesting. Harp and steel, we called that. The place was packed and did really well. So six guitars that are as unique as this, and uh, it's just uh, the, uh, the stories. So I wrote a bunch of songs on here, and I was playing at the Pacific Rim Art Society's Art Splash one year. And I, w I mean, I wasn't playing that there. I was sitting the shows, what they call it. So you have to have somebody in the room with all the paintings and the artwork and the sculptures and stuff. So I was sitting there with Dolores Baswick was the vice president and I was the president at the time. So for three hours, I played the same song. Like, cause I was like, well, what if I do this? Oh, I can get a minor chord if I do that. So I'm messing around and I like for three whole hours, Dolores had to listen to me playing the one thing, so I called the song Art Splash, and uh, uh, it evolved into this.
I took a few jazz lessons. My father thought, well, if you're going to play guitar, you should get some proper lessons. So I got some lessons at the Frank Quinn School of Music in Montreal. I wonder if that still exists. And the guitar they had there for the students to use were sort of inexpensive, but there was a harmony arch top that everybody loved. It just looked beautiful. It looked like a Stradivarius violin with the F holes. And they wouldn't sell it to me, but they said, we'll order you one. They'll be just the same. So they ordered one in and it was so ugly. It had, it was pale white with black and white barber pole um, binding on it. And it, it did sound the same. It, it was a nice guitar, but I was, I said, oh, this, this is horrible. So it's, so I ac actually paid them full price for the used one. It was student guitar, and I've had that ever, forever. It's been on motorcycle trips to Cape Cod. You take a bag and you put the guitar over your shoulder like this with the neck going that way, and it floats. As you're on the motorcycle like this, if you have the guitar on a side bag like this, it'll just rise up a little bit and float along with you. It was all over the Maritimes that way. It was like, it took a while. It has, that guitar port has good cracks in the side. It got so much pressure when I thought I had to have in a backpack like this that it actually broke the body. But I still have that guitar. I guess I could show you that one. Sure. Like, this is a, probably a 1969 top of the line Harmony Patrician. So like it's not a really expensive guitar. You look at the cracks from being on the motorcycle. Like, that's been glued and cleated. There's proper ways to, to fix that. I had a, a pickup stuck on it. This bridge has a pickup in it. So I have the original bridge. There was a big pick guard that I don't like pick guards because I like to get my hands in here. So I took that off. But So I've had this longer than any uh, any of the instruments. This kind of guitar is very trebly sounding. But um, I heard about people, they have new guitars that have controls here and somebody was playing the guitar with the controls were broken so they took it out to get it fixed and they realized, oh wait a minute, this there's, I'm getting more sound out of there. So if you let it breathe, it's like having ported speaker boxes. They, they realized that if you put a hole in the back of the speaker box, the speaker could move more. But it means the top can move more and has this much bigger sound than it ever really should have. So despite what, you know, all the different things I have, I s still have this one. This was the one that's hanging over the bed. This was sitting at where I was practicing with with Wayne Vliet actually. We were working on, I was playing the the uh, baritone, big huge baritone guitar and he's playing a mandolin and it made a really nice mix sound. But this was sitting around the back and it was supposed to be getting fixed. Completely wonky frets in the bowed neck and the, it's even twisted a little bit. Doesn't matter for slide. <laughs> Oh, I got more songs that are, you know, three quarters written, and uh, I guess I'm going to do, I'll at least do an album that's uh, the six guitars songs and, and uh, that whole show. I suppose it could be a, a video as well, but, uh, you know, like six guitars, and even if it's just two or three songs each, that's a, that's a sizable album. So it's uh, hard to know. What to do? I, su I suppose uh, there's online concerts and things. So there's there's lots of ways to make money for the big uh, internet companies, but it doesn't make you much money when you when you're doing those things. Like you, you have to have millions of hits to make uh, a fairly small amount of money. But you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, Got to keep playing it anyway. Pacific Art Society's been talking about having. Uh, a music school, you know, uh, practice rooms. Like it's it's sometimes hard to find places to practice, especially if you're a, a rock band. It's not not so hard to practice in the living room uh, when it's this kind of stuff. If you're in an apartment, it can be. But um, we thought it'd be a perfect place to have a music school, which would include everything: places for people to get together and concerts and play. And I, I think we'll probably get to that eventually. You know, 
50 years of Pacific Rim Art Society. So then during the next 50, we want a music school, an art academy. Like, wouldn't they? I think uh, the board's talking about an art academy, not just a music school. I've learned a lot about art hanging out with these people.